right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's Jill with Go English Coach. Uh, we are starting right now class five of our intermediate grammar one class. Um, I didn't fully complete what we're doing here. Um, today, we're going to do a quick review of the past tense of the to be. Um, so we have talked through uh, pre simple present and present progressive in the last two weeks. Then we, so if you missed those classes, go in the calendar and look back at those classes and get a nice little review for yourself. Um, and then, uh, let's see, Thursday, today's Tuesday, Thursday of last week, we began working on the past tense. And the first part of the past tense, past tense we started with the past tense of to be, the copula. Um, and so that's where we are today. We're gonna review that. I also gave you guys in our class on Thursday um, a list of the past tense, irregular past tense verbs in English. And remember, there are a lot of them. So um, practicing and studying those would be really helpful. We're going to go over that a little bit today. Um, let's see. So we're going to look at the ED and irregular endings uh, for past tense. All right. Um, and remember, these classes are always open to people joining uh, live. So right now, we've got people mostly just watching. Um, maybe the schedule we need to kind of adjust. You know, if there is a better time, I would love for you guys to let me know that. Um, I because I, you know, I, I'm happy to teach like this. Uh, Again, my microphone keeps all the chatting. That'll help the audio. Um, I'm happy to teach um, classes like this, but it's so much more effective if there are um, students in the class. So let's get started. Okay, so let's review this past tense of to be. Um, fairly easy, right? You really only have the two um, forms that you need to be concerned about. You've got was and were, right? I was, you were she was, we were, and they were, okay? So um, super easy on that. Um, keeping in mind, of course, the spelling for this were. So practicing that, lots of people make a mistake with that. So I don't want that to happen to you, okay? And then using um, the past tense, uh, was using wasn't and weren't, wasn't and weren't. Okay, so they weren't tired. That's the shortened, um, contracted version of were not. Okay, they weren't tired. Okay, now um, when we go to use the yes, no questions version for the past tense of to be, we have a switch, right? So in the in the affirm in the statement form, okay, we've got I was. So the subject plus the form of the verb to be. I was, okay. In the question form, we switch the order there. So we now have was I tired? It's a question. Was I tired? Kind of a strange question because you don't normally ask yourself a question, but it's just a good way to practice that. And then again, we switch the subject so that to be is first position, the first word. Were you tired? Were you tired? Were you tired? Okay. And then the answers to those questions was no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. Okay. Yes, you were. Um, great. So what I would like to do now is let's do a little exercise with using the the um the past tense here in the, the to be form. Okay, so we're going to move over here to the computer and have you guys sit down with me here. Hopefully everybody has um, paper and pen so that you can work on these things together. Even if you're, you know, doing this um, on your own, um, you know, studying is, is part of the journey is that the, the learner has the work, right? The teacher has work, but the students have work too. Um, so let's just switch this over here. Okay, so let's take a look at this activity here. Um, we've got a chart of famous writers. This is an activity in our Focus on Grammar book. 
Um, and it says to complete the sentences with was, wasn't, were, and weren't. Okay. So we're looking at these names, Isaac Babel. It looks like he was born in 1894 and died in 1941. Simone de Beauvoir, 1908. Okay. You get the idea. So these are people, this looks like they're born, they're born in death date the country that they are from, and then a short description of who they were, okay? So this person was a short story writer and a playwright, so somebody who writes plays. Um, Simone was a novelist and an essayist, so that's exciting. Okay, so you can see what's going on here, okay? So that's our chart that we're going to use to answer these questions. So I will do my best to make sure you can see both the chart and the the questions down here um okay so so here's an example simone de beauvoir wasn't a french poet so you look for this person's name he is from france but he was not a poet okay so we're going to say that so this is correct he wasn't a french poet she was a French novelist, okay? So you can see that we're choosing which form of was, wasn't, were, and weren't, okay? Okay, let's continue on. So we've got Wang Wei. This person um, was born in 699, um, born in 699. So we're using was, okay? Let's scoot down here. Hopefully you can see enough here. Um, number three, we've got Lucy M. Montgomery and Lorraine Hansberry. So there's two people. Um, and there's one line, South American writer. So let's look at those. So we've got Lucy Montgomery. She's from Canada. So she's not South American. And then Lorraine Hansberry is from the United States. So we're going to say... We're going to use the negative form. So looking back up here, it's either wasn't or weren't because it's a not it's not a true statement if it's positive. Um, and the other thing is that there are two of them, so we need to use they. So they, Lucy Montgomery and Lorraine Hansberry, weren't. Okay, and so just one thing to note here is when you've got this is the subject. So the subject can be a phrase, it can be a collection of things, but the subject here is two people. Okay, so Lucy M. Montgomery and Lorraine Hansberry weren't South American writers. Okay, so the subject is not always just one thing. Okay. Great. So the next follow up statement is they blank North American writers. This is positive because the United States is in North America and Canada is in North America. So we're going to say they were, okay? They were North American writers. You know, I would, uh, if I were you guys, I would pause this video and see if you can do the rest of these. Let me just move it down here so you can see it. And then I'll move it here so you can see that. And you can maybe take a screenshot of those things and work on this on your own. We have to just love technology. And I wish that we were in the same classroom together, but the reality is, is um, working at home and with computers is so much easier than me coming to where you are. Although someday I would love to meet my students in person. That is a dream of mine. Okay, um, number four, it says Carol Kapik, blank, a poet. Okay. So let's go look here. Carol Kopik. Here's the dates that she lived. She only lived for 48 years. Czechoslovakia. She was a novelist and an essay. She was not a poet. She wasn't a poet. Okay. Pablo Neruda, blank, from Chile. Let's go up to Pablo. Let's see. What does it say? So was or wasn't, because it's one person, so we know it's was or wasn't, okay? Pablo was 
from Chile. Okay, another place that I would love to visit. Um, Agatha Christie, blank American. Blank American. Let's go up to the top here. Agatha Christie was, was she American? Was she American? She was not American. She was from England. So Agatha Christie wasn't. So here's a question you could have, that I was asking, was she American? Okay. That's one of the questions. She blank British. She was British. Okay. Um, Isaac Babel blank Russian. Let's see. Let's look at Isaac's information up here. Yes, he was Russian. So he was Russian. He wasn't French. Okay. He wasn't French. All right. Nazim Himket blank from Russia. Let's go look at that person. Up here, we've got Nazim Him Hikmet, Hikmet, and that person is from Turkey. So they are not, that he, she is not from Turkey. He, let's see, Nazim Hikmet wasn't from Russia, okay? He was from Turkey. Babo and Hikmet, blank, both playwrights. Let's look up top. So was Babel a playwright? Yes. What is the other one? Hikmet? Yes. So Babel and Hikmet were, because it's plural, were both playwrights. Okay. And finally, this last one here, Pablo Neruda and Simone de Beauvoir, Blank, both born in the early 90s. Okay, let's look at those two up there. Pablo here was born, yes, in the early 1900s. I said it wrong. The Not the 90s, the 1900s. The 1900s. That's how we say those words. So 1900s, okay? With the little S at the end, it means the 1900s. You can say the 2000s. You can say the 1800s, the 1700s. That's how we refer to the group of years, okay? 1600s and then the 2000s, okay? We, in, in our pronunciation and fluency class, we talk a lot about numbers and pronunciation of numbers and how to use numbers. So uh, if you're interested in looking at that, I know that numbers can actually be very tricky for a lot of people. So um, don't let it bog you down. Um, and also, if you review in our archives and just search numbers, you should get a, a couple of videos that uh, where I discuss um, working with numbers and speaking and saying numbers and practicing that. Okay. Okay. So Pablo Neruda and Simone de Beauvoir. Did we look at his? Yes, they were both born in the early 1900s. So we are going to say we're going to call this two people so it's essentially like saying they right they were bo both born in the early 1900s both just means two okay the both of them were born in the early 1900s okay um let's see great work i hope that doesn't continue on to the next page so good work on that um what I'd like to do now, if you want to take a little screenshot of that and practice a little bit more on your own, go ahead and do that. Okay, there's that. Perfect. Um, I have to erase this, otherwise my books get ruined and then I never get through. And I have to buy new ones. Um, you know, this would be great if people were buying these books at home. I do not, um, I don't get a, I don't get paid by this company, um, but I'm a huge, as a teacher, of course, I'm a huge fan of books and studying. And, you know, there are a lot of online options for teaching, but, um, you know, realistically, what needs to happen for somebody to actually learn a language for, you know, if you, if you under a, a person who is learning, let's say their first language. Okay. If, if you're saying, you know, you're, maybe you have a child who's one or two years old and they're learning their first language. Um, 
they are getting um, tons of input, right? And, and they don't learn it alone, right? Where do they learn the language from? They learn it from their parents and the people around them. They recognize that they must learn to communicate in order to be a part of the family unit or whoever they live with. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of studies on, you know, um, language acquisition, first language acquisition, and then comparing it to your second language or your third or your fourth. Um, and realistically, it, it's, it's, a, it's a different process, of course, because you, when you're learning your second or your third language, you're filtering it through your first language. But my point is that, you know, learning is, a, is, is, it's necessary for other people to be there. Um, so when people ask me like, you know, what shows can I watch and what, you know, and I'm not against that. Um, I'm not against trying to learn on YouTube or watching movies or whatever, but you know, you really, and, and just like a child needs, if they say a word incorrectly, you know, we kindly correct them. You know, if, if um, maybe you don't say, no, that's wrong. Um, and, but you you might just say, oh, that's cup. We say cup, you know, if I'm thinking about my coffee cup here, right? So if you're, if they are saying coop, uh, you're going to say, oh, the cup, oh, the cup. And then they think, oh, I said that wrong, right? So it's, it's this beautiful process. Um, and my point that I'm trying to make is that really um, language learning is best done with people, okay? with a teacher and with students of, you know, colleagues and friends, that's the best way to learn it. It's it, as with anything, think about it. If you want to go to the gym or you want to learn how to, you know, run a marathon, it's like the best way to do that is when you're with people. Why? Because it's more motivational, right? It's more fun. Um, I, you know, lots of people do things all on their own and that's fine. But, um, I specifically with learning how to um, speak another language, um, interaction with people, feedback from teachers and professionals is key, okay? So what I wanted to do is get started on the regular and irregular verbs. I hope that you guys, you know, took a couple of minutes at least, if not more, um, to look at the um, irregular list of um, past tense verbs in English. It's long. It's a long list. Um, on my book, it was like a page and then a half of the next page. So let's start with the regulars. So we take a simple verb like uh, move or um, travel. Okay. Let's, those are our verbs. Okay. And let's make them in the past tense, right? So we have our affirmative statements. Affirmative is plus. It's just a statement. So I moved, you moved, she, it's all moved, right? All have the same here, they and we. It's all just moved, right? It's all traveled. We're just adding the ED. Okay, traveled. So we're just adding E, D. Now what happens with the ones with the silent E, we just take that E off. So there's no two E's, okay? So we just moved, traveled, okay? Then we have, let's see, we've got a couple irregulars. Let's do this. What happens in the past tense over here? With come, the past tense is came. We change the E. No ED, it's we change it. Okay. And leave is now left. Okay. So if you are confused about those, that's just because it's an irregular form. And we have to just get used to which ones are irregular and which ones are not. When there's a lot of them. Okay. So that's our simple affirmative. Now, when we go to change this to the negative, let's take a look at what happens, okay? Let's stay using these, these uh, verbs here. 
So we'll use move, travel, come, and leave. Let's see, move, travel, come, and leave. This is the present tense form. Okay, let's change those to negative. Nope, not positive, negative. Oh my goodness, I'm tired today, you guys. I move, and if we're gonna make it negative, we're gonna say I didn't move, okay? You didn't travel. Okay, now what's happening here? So we've got, we're using the, the auxiliary did, well do, but do in the past tense is did. And then we're changing back to the positive tense or the, 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 the affirmative form, the base form of it. So we don't say I didn't moved with D on the end. This is negative, so this does not need to be negative, okay? You didn't travel. So we go back to the original form. Um, she didn't come, okay? They didn't leave, okay? This can be tricky for people often because you're having to change it. So in the past tense, it's left in the affirmative, but in the negative, you go back to the original form, but you're using this did not or didn't. Okay, you can also say did not, that's totally okay. It's totally normal. Either one is completely grammatically correct, okay? Um, so let's see, she didn't come, they didn't leave, okay? Now, hopefully that's easy for all of you. All right, let's look at questions. Okay, what happens with questions in the yes, no? We always do this part, okay? So, um, did you move, this is in the past, last year? Okay, so what happened? We take, you have the do auxiliary, the subject and your main verb, okay? Do plus subject plus main verb. That's what that stands for, okay? One. Let's look at another one. Did, um, did you come... Did you come late yesterday? Okay, so what's happening again? It's the, and this is the present tense, the present tense of the main verb. So do auxiliary, subject, main verb. Do auxiliary, subject, main verb, okay? Now it's the same then in the negative questions, you can say, uh, it's like a clarifying, let's use this. Um, didn't, you travel to Thailand? Didn't you? It's like, a, it's kind of the same question is did, did you travel to Thailand is the same meaning as didn't you travel to Thailand? It's got kind of the same meaning. It, it does have the same meaning, just a different tone, okay? Um, didn't they? leave for California. Didn't they leave for California? Like you're kind of confused, so you're clarifying. Or maybe somebody said something wrong and you're kind of correcting them. Didn't they leave? So you see what I'm saying? Okay, so those are the yes, no questions. And then the answers for those, did you move last year? Yes, I did, okay. Or no, I didn't. And you answer all of those. Didn't you travel to Thailand? No, I didn't. 
Okay, it's the same two. It's the same for all of them. Okay. Um, let's see, what else did I want to teach you guys? That's it for that. Um let's see. Okay, what I would like to do um is have you, I'm gonna give you, let's see, where is that worksheet I wanted to have you guys look at? Okay. Perfect. This is going to be your homework. So take out a piece of paper and when you're done, please just go through and answer these questions on a piece of paper. Each one of them has a number. So you just do one, the answer to the answer. Okay. Very easy. So let me give this to you here and then we will correct this in our class on Thursday. Okay. So it says two. Complete the biography of the American poet Emily Dickinson. Use the past of the form, past form of the verbs in parentheses. So below the line, you have the verb that they want you to use. Okay. So Emily Dickinson, one of the most famous American poets, lived from 1830 to 1886. Okay. Her favorite topics were, okay, good, nature, time, and human emotions. Okay. So I'll give you that one there. Okay, so take a pause and, and finish that up. All right, moving on to the next one. We've got affirmative and negative statements. That top one is only affirmative, which means positive, okay? Down here in exercise three, we have affirmative and negative statements, okay? So you can use wasn't, like, use, okay. Let's see, did we have a little thing on her? Oh, yes, wait, 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 nope. Okay, so you are using what they're giving you here. So you can see here, they give you the verb and they tell you it's negative. So Dickinson wasn't only interested in poetry. She also liked, okay, so when it's negative, they're gonna tell you it's negative. All right, so please pause that and finish that there. All right, everybody, that is it for today. Let me say goodbye to you all here. Thank you so much for being here and have a great rest of your day.